Okay. Right. So we looked at the quality of excellence, right? So we, we know that there is a dif difference between, you know, excellence and uh, perfectionism. You know, we are, it, when we say excellence, we are give, giving our best. I think we, we've seen it. Uh, we've looked at it uh, earlier also. We're giving our best and it's not about um, uh, something that is error-free. Well, our, our giving our best can be error-free also. You know? um, but uh, it's it's... We are cons constantly and continuously improving on giving our best, right? And we are we are doing it as unto God, and uh, and that's an important quality uh, to see uh, or to build in others whom we want to raise up as leaders. Right? So we're looking at uh, okay some of the qualities to look for in potential leaders, and you know excellence is is one such quality. And and if if people are in that in an environment where uh, this is a value, right? This is, this is something that is uh, uh, of a, a value, and they see it modeled, right? Um, and uh, and they see it modeled uh, over and over again. Then it becomes their value as well, right? And and it uh, progressively gets developed, and it becomes part of them. And so, um, so whomever you are looking for as a potential leader, you know, this quality is already in them. So we just need to, you know, highlight that, reiterate that, and, uh, and then they understand, right? Uh, okay, this is something that I need to go in for. And this is something that I need to put on display, or, you know, this is something that needs to be seen in every, every task that I undertake, right? So, so it's very important that, um, you know, in our ministry, in our uh, in our own life, that we 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 display it first. Right? That's something that we're going to look at. You know, that we put it on display. That we uh, live uh, by example. That we lead by example. And then it's so much easier. You know, especially these intangibles. You know, these intangibles like uh, you know, excellence. Of course, uh, uh, you know, it's not very abstract, right? It is. It it is seen in in. Uh, it is uh, it's something that people can experience seeing um, um, but you know certain things like integrity and and other things like right, uh, which needs to be part of us right? if we lead if we lead with that uh, in our hearts um, in our lives then then the environment that we create right the um, be it the team, be it the organization, be it, uh, um, you know, uh, the ministry, uh, it will be part of that environment, right? It, it, it is there and it is there for people to see, it is there for people to experience and, uh, and then they will take, uh, you know, it becomes part of their lives, right? Um, so that's step one. And of course, it needs to be reiterated and uh, highlighted and, and, you know, stated, communicated that it, this is something that is uh, an expectation right? and encouraged in their lives, uh, and uh, and it will come through, right? Okay. Um, the other thing that we can look for uh, to look for in 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 a, in a leader is um, you know is the person uh, committing to growing continuously. Right. Um, well, there are certain things that that actually prevent this from happening. You know, a sense of a sense of uh, um, you know reaching a stage where saying, "Okay, I I know it all," uh, or there is you know not really pushing for uh, knowing more, um, not wanting to learn, right? Um, and you know, they, uh, you know, when it comes to continuous growth, there could be certain things that challenge that. Right. There could be maybe certain things, maybe some disappointment, maybe some discouragement, maybe, um, you know, these are some things that really put out the fire for continuous growth. Right. So, uh, you know, if a person doesn't have that, maybe you know, we can look at addressing these things, these other areas. But really, continuous growth is important because um, we cannot give uh, others what we do not have. Right. We cannot lead people to places that um, we have not reached. Right or or, um, uh, uh, or places of growth where we have not 
been there. So it's important that we as leaders grow and we we see that others also have that in them, right? So, well, if it is not there, we can teach, we can definitely train, and we can create an um, an expectation, an awareness, and an expectation that you know go in for this. You know, don't plateau off, don't stop. There's so much more. You know, continue to grow. Right? And um, you know, yesterday I just had the privilege of uh, meeting someone uh, who lost uh, their spouse and this person is uh, you know, she is in her 70s uh, well in her seven, mid 70s but she and her husband they used to serve uh, in a you know in a in a rural church and it was a teaching ministry so this so the, the son was actually you know, explaining that they would uh, finish the church service service at about 12 30. now this person was not the pastor you know this couple they were not the pastors but they were there in the church and helping you know the the church helping the ministry so the church service would get over by 12 30 they would have a half an hour tea break uh you know just keep in mind that all this is happening you know it was recent these are all recent things you know last three four years right so um half an hour tea break and then they would uh, have a, a discipleship training, right? And this couple would handle it um, the, right from the start. You know, they have different modules, everything figured out, some three modules. They, they do this um, over a period of a year. And uh, so from maybe one o'clock till about 2, 2.30, they would, they would teach, they would train others, you know, who would come and... Uh, uh, so husband and wife, so one person is translating. So the, their preparation for that, right, it begins on Friday, where they would, uh, now they're not very tech savvy, so they use a whiteboard. So they write everything, right, all the bullet points, everything is written, the topics uh, on a whiteboard. So, so they, they needed one more whiteboard because they were running out of space on one whiteboard. So they took another whiteboard uh, and they would, you know, start writing, keeping everything uh, on on a Friday, Saturday. You know, pray and prepare, and and Sunday they would take these whiteboards to church and keep it there, and and you know, all the uh, notes and everything is there, and then they would you know teach the uh, teach the those who sign up for the course, so those who signed up. So they'll finish by two two thirty, go back home, and then you know start cooking or prepare their lunch, and you know this was their every weekend every sunday this was their ritual right? this is what they would and i was amazed that um, at that age you know, to see the zeal to see that fire and uh, of course you know now the husband is no more so uh, and you know she was just recounting all those days and uh, and how until very recently they used to still do that right continuously growing Right, wanting to grow, wanting to serve, wanting to know more. And she was talking about how she would prepare everything that uh, you know uh, that uh, what she needs to teach, and it'll be there. Um, she'll be thinking about it. What more, Lord? What more? You know, how else can I explain this? And and the Lord would give her revelation, and uh, and she would make a note of it, and uh, and then you know uh, teach teach and so on. So so that hunger, right? Uh, not wanting to stop at a certain age, even you know, age is not a limiting factor. Um, uh, if you look at life, Paul's life, you know, I'm sure you've studied right the number of years and, and the, uh, after which he came into ministry, he started his ministry and he started his um, you know missionary journeys and on fire, on and zealous as ever, right? So uh, you know, this passage of time age should not really put out that fire for continuous growth and it starts early right it starts early um and it's not too late to start uh, I, i'll just mention that as well but when we are looking for leaders to build that also in them to look for you know this quality also and we see that okay people are too satisfied not wanting to grow not wanting to learn right and this needs to be sparked you know and uh, this needs to be, uh, you know, something which is in them so that they can come, you know, we can assign them that position because they will be able to take others uh, only as, 
to the level that they are, right? So they need to continuously um, keep at it, you know, uh, keep growing. And and there is so much, right? Uh, you know, there's so much because God is infinite, and His wisdom is infinite, uh, and there's so much that He's, you know, His heart is to uh, teach, right? His heart is to show. Um, and I think this um, this morning during the supernatural hour, the, the scripture that was uh, that John Paul read out, you know, Jeremiah thirty three three and uh, and also. 33.6, uh, 33.3 talks about, you know, the Lord saying, call unto me and, and I will answer and I will show you um, wonderful things that you do not know yet. So that calling unto him and like we saw last uh, last session, I think, you know, that going to him with that big measure is our responsibility, right? Is the responsibility of the leader. So uh, let there be no limitation, you know, let there be no ceiling. Um, um, and let's continue to go. Let's continue to grow in, uh, in him. So this is something that uh, a leader, you know, to look for in a potential leader, to look for uh, or to build and grow uh, and strengthen in potential leaders, because you know that the growth of that area of ministry and uh, which they, you're going to assign, you know, the, the growth of that particular responsibility and, you know, whatever oversight that you're going to be handling uh, will depend on this. You know, this is one of this is one of the factors, right? Um, because as they grow, then they will the others will grow as well. They'll be able to impart. They'll be able to take others into the areas that they are growing into or they have grown into, right? So, uh, continuous growth. Okay. Um, no personal agenda. I think we we looked at that. You know, uh, there's no personal agenda. There's no um, hidden agenda. Uh, they, you know, uh, what what you see is what you get, right? Authentic, real, and uh, the fact that they are in ministry for serving, and there's no other other plan. There's no other hidden thing now. Uh, so that level of um, you know transparency and integrity um, will come. Uh, uh, when they see it in our own lives, and uh, and also when that is a value, when that is uh, spelt out, communicated, uh, reiterated, right? Okay, gift and calling. Are they graced for that particular area, right? For that particular task, um, or is it is it is it for something else, right? And some things are very uh, visible, uh, and you know for a fact that yes, you know this is not a skill. That they have, maybe you know, if they have a uh, you know a potential for it, maybe they can learn, grow. But if if this if it's not something that they are graced with, you know, then maybe it's something else. You know, they need to do something else, right? So, um, are they gifted in that area? Right. Okay. So maybe if it's an area like counseling, and uh, you know, they are not listeners. Uh, they're constantly distracted and they are constantly finishing sentences of other people and uh, and you know they are just there to just drive the ideas that they have uh, into the heads of others then you know that it, maybe they should be something doing something else right? and not in the area of counseling right um, even if they say i'm very passionate about counseling but you know that you know they're gifted for other things so maybe we can guide them in that right and not for this so uh what is the area that they are gifted with what is their um, what are they graced with identify that recognize that and uh, and see if it's a good fit right um and also to see you know are they uh, are they good followers right now we know that leaders as leaders leadership is about influencing for people um for their good and to bring out the good in people uh, and to reach objectives and help reach personal objectives and thereby the collective objective as well. So we know that is that. But are uh, are they good followers as well you know, in terms of following instructions, uh, in terms of you know getting their hands dirty, right? Uh, are they good followers, right? Are they um, people who would lend a helping hand, right? Are they people who would support? Um, now, these are these are uh, uh, important factors to consider 
right? Are they good followers? Right? Or, 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 or are they interested in just giving instructions and, uh, you know, uh, and watching others do the work, right? Uh, will they, or do they personally, uh, you know, have that kind of um, work ethic, you know, have that kind of a characteristic to follow through with instructions, with humility, right? Uh, which they want to see in others, right? They expect of, out of others, but what about them themselves, you know? Uh, um, so do, do they have that in their own lives? And also, uh, are they good nurturers, right? Which means, are they, do they have a heart for nurturing other people, for building up other people, right? For helping others, um, for really, you know, um, uh, maybe train others, maybe, um, you know, provide skill for others. Um, you know, I'm sure that you, you have met people who, who you know, share um, things or, uh, you know, about their own, whatever they have learned um, or something new that they have learned, something uh, something useful that they have learned, you know, they share with others you know, they, uh, and they help others, um, you know, something that is beneficial to others, you know, they have that heart to nurture, right? So to see that, are they good nurturers right? or are they very closed about, you know, something that, some things that are beneficial, you know, are, do they you know, do they just keep it to themselves and they don't want others to benefit from it right uh, uh, a heart to really help others grow um, a heart to see others uh, flourish right so these are uh, something so it looks like a pretty daunting list you know if you look at these uh, let me just share You know what what might go in in our minds is okay if if i want somebody as a leader you know as a potential leader uh, do they need to check all these boxes right do they need to have all these things well in reality uh, you know that's like uh, what we shared you know they need to have it in a certain measure they may not have it in all maturity you know we are works in progress, and uh, yes, there are qualities which are being developed. Right? So intentionally develop that in people whom we are considering for leadership right? till it's part of their lives. Right? So that we can do, right? Uh, as leaders ourselves, we can we can see that okay, is it part of my life first and for, foremost? Is it you know is it becoming a place of strength? And to see that okay. I, I see that this person is uh, mature or has uh, strengths in certain areas, but these are things that the person has to grow into even more or mature into even more, right? So, um, so having known the importance of all these characteristics right, and how it can impact um, their leadership, how, in, how it can impact um, the areas that they're overseeing, right? Um, for us to develop that, develop that and, and into strengths in people um, and bring them to a place of maturity. Um, because Paul you know, writes about that, you know, this, is what, this is why we do ministry, that we want to see present, uh, present every person perfect in Christ. You know, the heart for ministry is that, right? So uh, while raising up leaders, uh, we can have these characteristics and develop these characteristics um, in people, right? And bring them to a place of maturity. Okay. So, any 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 questions? Anything that uh, you would want to share additionally? Um, we can talk about it now. We can discuss, uh, or maybe your experience in raising up leaders. I think that will also be good if you can share. Um, like, what was the like a high point of such, you know, such things that you did and, um, well, what are some discouraging moments, maybe? Um, maybe we can have a couple of people share. Anyone?
anyone. No? Okay. Okay, some things to, uh, you know, a, a question that we might have is, okay, what if that person is unwilling? You know, I see so much potential, um, but um, what hope is written, Sam? Okay, Sam, if you have a question, is it? <laughs> okay. Um, so the thing is, you know, what if that person is unwilling, right? So, you know, that's a that's thing, right? Like even when we want to help people come out of certain things, um, we see that it's so easy sometimes, right? We see that it's, it's if only this person would make this change, then they would really, you know, they would they would walk free of this problem. They would walk free of this stronghold. Um, so the thing is, you know, um, what if they are unwilling? Okay. Now, truth is, we cannot do anything. Right? Truthfully, uh, honestly, we cannot do anything. We cannot go beyond uh, people's will or people's choice. Right? We can encourage, and, uh, um, and that would be. Uh, that would be something that we can do. We can encourage. We can um, we can actually uh, provide hope, communicate hope, and say, "Hey, this is something that you can be. Right? This is all that you can be. Uh, if one does this, this is what you know. This is where you can reach. So uh, we can paint that picture and uh, provide that encouragement. Okay, but that decision." Uh, that has to come you know, from that person. So if the person is unwilling, we really cannot do much. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. okay, since Beth is here, Beth, um, I just wanted to just remind about the IRP. Um, sorry, I'm just taking this moment as I just noticed you here. Uh, if you can just email me, uh, you know, I haven't received that email. So I sent you an email with my email ID, so you can email me. Um, I checked my inbox, it hadn't come, so yeah. Thank you. Okay, uh, let's move on, right? Um, so next, what we're gonna look at is, uh, when it comes to nurturing leaders, okay, so here's a process. You know, we looked at all these characteristics and we said, okay, um, these are good things to have, these are necessary things to have, and these are things that need to be developed. So they're going to have, um, uh, I mean, it's going to be a very impactful uh, leadership. It's going to be very, uh, it's going to be useful, uh, helpful for them. Uh, and, and the ministry um, is going to thrive and flourish if they have these characteristics, right? So we, we looked at these things. Now, now uh, is there some process? Is there something that we can, you know, we can look at or follow when it comes to? Uh, nurturing leaders, right? Nurturing other leaders. Okay. Um, well, we know that uh, people grow go through a, a you know stages in growing, in in uh, in growing in in actually fitting into their leadership role, right? Uh, we know that they go through um, uh, certain phases, so it's good for us to understand that, and uh, it's good for us to even follow that. Right. Uh, so here's a uh, here's an example, uh, and we could look at it as different stages. Now here's a uh, you know uh, uh, the first stage. Right. We call it the we can call it the preparation stage. Okay. So in this stage, uh, well we have we have identified the person. We see all these qualities, and uh, the person is also willing, um, or maybe has also uh, you know. Uh, has also come forward to take up uh, certain responsibilities, right? So, um, so uh, here's the thing. Here's the preparation. So, in the preparation stage, um, there's a lot of communication, you know, expectation uh, about character, about the task, about the responsibility, and uh, you know what is expected of the leader. And we're also, you know, there's also a sharing of the vision, the big picture and how things should be done okay there's a, so that's a preparation stage and uh, you know i i just, I just remember it in uh, uh, you know as when i joined uh, uh, full time to serve in the at apc um 
so I remember this being done to me. You know, there was a sharing of the vision and sharing of the task. And because for me, ministry was something which was very, very new. Right, uh, the area was uh, this was something that was uh, this was not something that I was exposed to. You know, the, um, uh, uh, in the sense, in this um, kind of a level. And also um, the role and everything was was new to me, right? So, so there was a lot of time taken to to communicate the vision. So sometimes I used to wonder, well, let's, let's just go get the things done. You know, why is it? Why are we taking this time? Um, but I realized that uh, I had not actually grasped, you know, um, the vision. So it, it was it was necessary to take that time to communicate to show, okay, this is the big picture. This is what we are going after, right? And uh, and uh, this is what ministry is about. And this is what your task is about. You know, your role in this big picture, this is what it is. This is how it will impact. This is how um, it will grow. And uh, and here are some things that you need to do and, and the way you go about doing it, right? So, um, so, the preparation stage would involve that. Okay, so as a leader, you know, it is our responsibility when we are raising up leaders to, to do this, right, to communicate this, right? um, to take time to intentionally you know, share the vision, to intentionally show the big picture, to intentionally share the expectation. Right? Um, and whatever else they, uh, we need to emphasize Right? about character, about excellence, about values, about culture and everything. You know, we talk about it and uh, maybe it's it's not just one sitting, right? It takes, it's, it happens over a period of time. It's uh, maybe multiple uh, sittings. No. So um, it can be a formal session where you say, okay, today let's talk about this right? or an informal one. Okay. You know, as we are having, you know, today as we are having tea, you know, you know, uh, let's just chat about this, right? So it can be a combination of formal sessions. It can be uh, an informal sessions, but um, but you intentionally do it, knowing that this is uh, this is going to ground the person. This is going to be very very helpful for that person. It is not wasted time, right? Um, well, sometimes we think, okay, I want the person to start start performing. You know, start start doing it right away start getting results right away um, well investing time in this preparation stage is crucial for that right but to get that person rooted uh, in in the right things so that uh, they will start producing they will start uh, you know uh, ministering in the right manner okay then, then comes the initial stage okay the preparatory stage where vision and everything is communicated, then the initial stage where uh, the person takes some tentative steps into the leadership role, right? And uh, as a leader, you're also involved uh, in in giving them guidance, in uh, providing the necessary equipment and the equipping, you know, whatever tools they need. Okay, so if it is uh, something to do with, uh, let's say, preaching, then uh, you know you would probably provide them with resources you would probably share from your example uh, you know the things to uh, do you know how how does one prepare how does one you know deliver the message or um, and uh, what to look for what to what to avoid right uh, you know, how how not to talk down to people and you know um, s several other things you know how um, and some and some very very practical and helpful things. So there is this equipping, there is this uh, you know uh, tools that we are giving them, and the direction, right, to help them do well, right. So and they are also uh, stepping into that role, which means they are also they will also be doing it, doing the task themselves, right. So uh, it would uh, help to provide feedback. And it would help to provide feedback and and share feedback and say um, uh, and also you know tell them okay this is what we will do we will review it and I'm going to be sharing some uh, you know uh, what I uh, uh, what I thought you know I'm going, uh, about how it was and uh, and be truthful about it and uh, and be honest about it and not really 
uh, cut back, you know, and not really camouflage it, uh, you know, be real, you know, certain things that um, uh, that are serious, you know, certain things that are uh, necessary, and and you see that there's a problem, you know, it needs to be communicated, right? So so that is the thing. This this feedback, that correction, uh, maybe there is uh, aligning in certain areas so all that happens like in the initial stage so if a person is unwilling to receive you know uh, then it's going to be a problem right even in this stage you know they're going to be they're going to be uh, saying oh you know but but you know uh, constantly defending and saying that okay this is but but actually i did this well uh, we need to hear you know their viewpoint and and uh, um, and maybe they have a you know the reason why they did that but if they're going to be very defensive all the time when feedback is shared and not really receiving feedback um, then it's going to be a problem right we need to uh, we need to uh, uh, communicate that hey, this is something that is helpful you know you take it and try it out and uh, and see how it will change right so th that happens in the initial stage okay then there is the settling in stage where um, the the person is you know, more and more progressively the leader is actually doing their task you know the, the task of uh, uh, the actual work of leadership or oh, before that um, yeah so uh, we in the initial stage if there is a you know, if there is a team that needs to be formed, um, there is help with that, that, you know, you as a leader can help, you know, putting together a team. Um, uh, and, and the reality is that, uh, yes, um, the team uh, functioning well and, uh, and all that, you know, there'll be some, there'll, there'll be some time, there'll be some, maybe some getting over some conflicts and, uh, you know, and, and then, setting in uh, settling in so um which will happen in the settling in stage right so uh, so we help with that as well is part of the equipping is part of providing the tools right so the settling in stage so the leader starts to uh, perform starts to walk in the role and they're making decisions uh, making certain choices uh, along with the team so it's time to not be so involved you know for us as leaders not to be so involved in the daily things uh, we still you know uh, because they're finding their strengths and they're getting uh, uh, the kind of settling in into the role uh, into the task and they're getting getting comfortable doing it right so um, so we step back not be very involved or intrusive uh, step back at the same time you know providing continuing to provide feedback continuing to provide um, any kind of reviews uh, and guidance and so on right they are still um, accessing or uh, being in touch with you for uh, some of the big decisions some of the challenges and and so that thing is always open right we've established that yes this uh, there's always this open communication to come and share feedback, to come back with difficulties or challenges, and and so on. So um, that is always there, right? So uh, so that happens in the settling in stage. Okay. So the uh, then the next stage is the growth stage where um, the leader is taking the uh, the area of ministry into new levels. You know, things are growing. Right, it's not where it 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 was that things are growing, things are flourishing. There are things being added on uh, to that, um, you know, to their particular um, uh, area of ministry, and they're doing new things. They are growing. They're going to another level, right? And the team is also functioning well. Um, so we're continuing to provide oversight, um, provide guidance, and the involvement is even lesser than it was earlier. Right. So, um, so the thing is that um, uh, if any input is required, then you as a leader, you step in and, and provide that input, right? But, uh, uh, but at any point where if, if there is a need for correction, if there is a need for, um, you know, realignment to the vision, it, it happens to the best of us, right? Um, that we sometimes forget, we sometimes, uh, uh, well, we get so engrossed in the task that we forget the big picture, you know, it happens or whatever, you know, uh, uh, maybe 
due to certain things we just uh, we miss out on certain things right so so the leader can always step in and provide that um, correction provide that realignment okay so so as the person who's being led we need to make space for that so at the preparation stage itself you know creating that uh, expectation and that culture right that feedback will be provided and it's not to uh, put the person down but uh, definitely to bring alignment to the task and the way it's done and the process and so on so um so it doesn't come as a surprise at whatever stage of leadership uh, growth right um so the growth stage in the maturity maturity stage where um the leader is raising up other leaders the leaders come to be a you know to be a place of being fathers and mothers and they're nurturing others right and uh, they are raising up other leaders uh, who can actually to whom you can trust and commit and delegate certain certain tasks right of the ministry so they've come to a place of maturity now you know it gives great satisfaction for us as leaders to and you know to see that happening um and uh, you know we we you begin to rejoice in the fact that okay the person is thriving flourishing and you know fulfilling the destiny fulfilling the call that god has for them and in doing so you know raising up other leaders as well so yeah so um, so that's happening right um so so what can happen you know here is also you know this is a possibility right so uh, we talk about the leadership uh, or the leader who's at that stage of uh, you know um, um, maturity um, in in their growth process, uh, we can talk about the leader taking a bigger role of ministry, where they can be even more impactful, right? A new area of ministry, um, or going to another level in the same uh, same ministry itself, right? Same uh, what they are giving oversight to. Or taking on an additional, maybe an area right, at the maturity stage, because we know that all the other things are in place. You know, whatever we uh, looked for or whatever we wanted to bring in in the preparatory stage or the preparation stage is now these are strengths; these are ingrained, right? And so, um, so now you know they can actually take on even more, right? take on. Uh, look for other areas or go to higher levels in the area of leadership. So that happens here. Yeah. Then, then probably, you know, this this is also a, a reality, right? They uh, maybe they come to a place where um, they've reached the plateau, right? They've reached the uh, you know whatever needs to be done in that particular area in that particular role, and they've raised up leaders who are you know functioning very effectively and and doing the task and carrying on their responsibility um maybe it's time for the leader to totally transition from that role of leadership because there are other leaders who can step in able uh, capable who can who can step in and take it to higher uh, realms uh, higher levels so maybe this leader can transition off into a totally new other no no totally new area okay um so this is also possible so um so as leader that we recognize that and uh, and we you know talk about that and say okay would you like to do this you know would you like to do that so we see that it's a very healthy uh process right it's a healthy process uh if it's done right um if it's done with the with the intention of uh, well uh of recognizing the call of god in their lives and uh, you know helping them to grow and helping them to um, you know come to this level and uh, and just bloom and blossom right in the area of ministry so we see this you know paul doing this to timothy uh with titus and um, you see that we see glimpses of that right we we see him um uh, taking timothy and uh, I, I think uh, you know in, in detail you can read this in kingdom builders um uh, taking timothy 
recognizing Timothy, seeing that he has something, uh, being patient with him, you know, even uh, when he does not do things out of fear, right? Uh, we see both in First uh, Timothy and Second Timothy, we see that uh, Paul reminding like First Timothy four and then Second Timothy one, we see Paul reminding Timothy, hey, Timothy, you know, don't forget that gift, don't neglect that gift that was given to you. And Second Timothy says, you know, um, God has not given us a spirit of fear, of power, uh, but of power and love and a sound mind. So he's like encouraging him and uh, kind of pushing him to use those gifts that are in him. Right. So we see. Uh, so he's recognized that he's, you know, there are certain gifts and abilities that are in him, and um, he gives him that responsibility. You know, uh, uh, um, so he's uh, Timothy is in Ephesus and Titus is in Crete, and and we see all that happening, right? And he's constantly uh, like in. I mean, he's uh, communicating uh, some of these experiences and what he should do and what uh, what. Uh, you should avoid and and so on right so so it can be a very um uh, very satisfying very fruitful um uh you know a process and uh, and and to know that um, well uh, for some of us it could be just a lifetime of doing this you know it could take a lifetime and well maybe some some it can be you know it can be quicker but it's going to take time, right? Developing people, and uh, and it's a very very satisfying uh, process, right? And um, yeah, the next thing is uh, what would so this is the process, right? We serve preparation and uh, the initial process, the growth, maturity, transition. Um, what would really um, fast track or what would really help? Uh, develop leaders, you know, uh, is when we create opportunities, right? When we identify opportunities and ask them to step in or to create opportunities um, uh, and ask people to uh, step in, right? Like, uh, well, since um, we invite, when, when we invite people to, you know, to the opportunity that we have created and saying, okay, would you like to do this, you know? Um, well, people do hesitate because it could be outside of their comfort zone, right? But when we, with the right encouragement and, uh, well, with the support, they would step in and uh, they would surprise us. You know, they'd be surprised themselves. They would surprise us uh, when they, you know, begin to do things and then do it well, right? So, um, so, so that's uh, that's something that we need. We can do. In order to develop leaders, to create opportunities, to invite them, uh, and uh, and uh, and to serve, right? But uh, all this is not done in in isolation, or um, you know, it is it is done, you know, uh, it's it's a it's a uh, you know, how do I put it? It's done in that environment where all these are visible, right? All the values are visible, all the culture is visible, and uh, also they have seen you as a life example right as they've seen you lead they've seen you do things and then and when they step in to these um, leadership roles then um, you know all the things that that have been sown in their hearts right uh, and which have been growing will will come to the forefront okay so um, so that's something that we can do okay um, what will again develop leaders uh, what will uh, help them to grow phenomenally is when we provide feedback. Okay, uh, when we sometimes we hold back from giving feedback because we don't know how they'll take it or what if you know what if they don't take it well, right? Um, what if uh, they are discouraged? But then with the feedback also when we encourage. And uh, with the feedback uh, or with the encouragement, also we provide the necessary correction uh, with the heart that it's for the good. Right? The motive is is not to put the person down. The motive is so that the person can set this aside or uh, or not uh, make those mistakes which are detrimental for the person and for you know the organization. Or the ministry, you know. Um, so if that is the motivation, um, definitely, you know, it will be received well, right? Uh, 
and uh, well correction uh, honest feedback um, it, it, in in a way you know it's it's tough it, it is difficult to you know digest you know if if you look at it personally you know maybe if you can look at some some of those um, moments when people would have you know come and given constructive feedback it's uh, initially you know it just hits you probably it's because of the effort that we have put in probably because it's because of you know all the time that has been invested and you did it and and so on you know it's it hits you secondly it could also because you know it was a mistake right and you were hoping that it would just go unnoticed uh, but uh, you know here it is right in front and then it's it's been shared you know none of us enjoy being told that we are wrong right um, but um, the fact that it can be very freeing and liberating when when it's been you know it's shared and said okay this is the expectation you know, we want you to do well we want you we know that you can do well but we need to avoid doing this right, in order to be able to do well right and grow beyond this so um so these are things that um, that can really uh, hasten the leadership process i mean the hasten the developing process you know uh, when we provide feedback when we provide the correction so as leaders we ourselves um, need to really learn how to do that in an encouraging manner because our emotions are really stirred up because something is not done right and we are also you know we are maybe we are upset maybe we are angry uh, maybe it's the uh, 10th time it's happening <laughs> so um, you know you are upset you're impatient and uh, so the thing is to not do it when it when it's in that right then that frame of mind but really to take them some time take a pause step back and then you know go forward and provide that and we will see that um, well uh, uh you know we we grow as well you know personally as leaders uh, because we are nurturing them in the right manner with the correction with the encouragement and with the you know with the review and feedback so uh, it helps right? it, we are we we are we grow as well and uh, and we see if it's taken received worked on then the person uh, thrives and really grows as a leader right Okay, so we'll stop here. Uh, I also want to um, say I, I think you would have noticed in the classwork section I've uh, uploaded the uh, eighteen minute uh, the to do list template, so it'll be good reading. Just wanted to um, tell you that it's um, it's a secular source in the sense it's not a Christian author, right? So um, some some terms, some some things that he mentions uh, maybe you know, may not be Christian. So just uh, yeah, yeah, just be mindful of that, right? Okay. Okay. So we'll stop here. Thank you. Uh, God bless. Have a great weekend. We'll catch up again next week. Bye bye. Thank, Thank you, Pastor. Hey, right, see you. Thank bye. you, Pastor. See you, guys. Bye. Thank you, Pastor. Bye bye. See you. Thank you, Pastor.